Hi, I'm Liz, and my other half is Charlie, and we are exceptionally frugal. That's why we're traveling the U.S. in our minivan Opal, paving the way for others to see that traveling on a budget can be quite fun. We love the outdoors, and we try to avoid cities, do lots of hiking, and have a strange obsession with rocks. So hop in the van, and let's see what kind of adventure we can find. Hi guys. Hi. Uh, I'm Liz. And I'm Charlie. We are in the Adventure Closet. And last you knew, we uh, had found that amazing ghost town, uh, Kaleo, Utah. And we were to stay another night, uh, but we were headed out to get some sunset shots. And the TPMS sensor went off in Oakland got out of the van instantly we heard the hissing of the tire. We were 126 miles from Alessua. Alright, so longer than you can go on a donut, which is what we have in Opal is a donut. We don't have a full size spare. But we did have fix a flat, so we decided to do the fix a flat first. Uh, to see how far that will get us until we can put the donut on if we needed to. Um, we got the fix flat on and seemed like everything was groovy. We went back to our campsite that we had stayed at the night before and um, we're just gonna park for the night and then, you know, start the adventure to get to the city the next day. But then which we had no clue where the nearest city was. Like, we had just, you know, started driving. I mean, we knew we could go back the way we came, which was, oh, 80 plus miles um, on a gravel road most of the way. And, and then we knew north was Wendover and south was, we didn't even know it was south. Right. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, we did find a, a guy on his tractor and he kind of basically laughed at us <laughs> because we were so far out there. Um, I don't know how these people live out there. Yeah. It was a long night babying the tire. We left, we left the campsite, we tried to baby it out, we decided to go back the way we came because we at least knew that route and we knew there was city out there. We could eventually get cell service. Yeah, and we knew where pavement would start. And uh, it just, every time we'd have to stop and put air in the tire, it, the length shortened between how, how quickly we had to stop. So we probably made, I don't know, like six stops to- A lot. It was a lot. And uh, we got to pavement. And then we got to a point, so it was like almost one o'clock in the morning at this point. Uh, we were out there, guys, on a gravel road. And you can't go too fast with the, the condition that we were in. So it took forever. But we, um, we decided to call AAA because we found cell service and we have AAA and it was dark. We just decided to do that, so to make life easier. And uh, dude came out, put our donut on. Dude we, had to come 60 plus miles to us, and we had already gone well over 60, 70 miles on the tire, maybe. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he got us fixed up and then we decided we were just going to camp at the closest spot we could find. It was on I Overland, it was called Nate Dog's Viewpoint. It looked like it was a viewpoint of the town of Fillmore. Nate Dog's uh, Lookout Spot. Yeah, yeah. Nate Dog's Lookout Spot. So we stayed there, we slept all right, and got up in the morning and found our way to the town of Fillmore. and. We had actually on the GPS, we were getting to a different tire store, but 
Um, we pulled into a parking lot and as soon as we got into town and there was another tire store and it worked out perfect. The guy Rod, Pioneer Tires, was, yeah, he was the best. He fixed us up so fast. He should work for NASCAR, seriously. Um, and then he also immediately diagnosed something that we kind of had a hunch was going on, um, that we had some shock issues in the back end of Opal. One of our shock shocks was completely shot. Yeah, and that's our fault. <laughs> um, anything that we've had to repair on Opal <laughs> thus far has been our fault. Um, but he went in the back, he found some shocks, he gave us a great deal on switching it out, and he did it in about 15 minutes. It was beautiful. Yeah, it was crazy. Yep, and she's riding like a dream. So, uh, back on the road we are, and we're headed to Vegas, baby. But we might stop some other places on the way. Anything else? No. We might stop some other places on the way without my hand up. With more enthusiasm, <laughs> my dear. We might stop some other places along the way. We might stop some other places along the way. Who knows? Come along with us. Showbiz is rough, y'all. <laughs> Fill up in Fillmore. 375 a gallon for regular $56.18. <laughs> That's got nothing on Opal. <laughs> We are right outside of Zion National Park and we are going to check out the Silver Reef, Silver Reef uh, Ghost Town. Looks like it might not be so ghosty, but we'll check it out and find out for real. There's like million dollar homes uh, just behind us. So I don't know uh, how ghost town this is gonna be. <laughs> but you're gonna think we're crazy because we're probably not gonna do Zion and it's literally right there. Yeah, you can see it <laughs> out the window. Look at this million dollar home though. Ooh, that place be fancy. He's got like a little castle thing on a, a spiral staircase. Wow. Fancy people live there. Yeah. Well, now they're sparking our interest. Silver Reef, the only place in the United States that silver was discovered in sandstone. Please, Please drive don't. carefully. <laughs> <laughs> this is really interesting. So this is like a viewing spot to see different areas for mills. So you look through this, It's a keep off wagon. It's 3.30 on a Saturday. Must be seasonal. Well, that's an interesting ore bucket. Huh. I don't think I've seen something like that. And it's garbage.
Doesn't feel really ghosty here, does it? It's cool, but it's a little bit commercialized and they've added too many new touches to it. So it doesn't really have that vibe, that ghost town vibe. But it's cool. Finally, some interesting stuff. It's like an <laughs> ore shoot here. Yeah, looks like there's probably mine down here in an old cabin. Oh, and look right across there. Oh yeah, what's that? It's a brick wall. Another structure. Yeah. Huh. Across from the ore chute, there's this chimney. And then those are the brick walls. A little closer. But yeah, there's definitely quite some other stuff out here. Active mining area for sure. Silver in the sandstone. It's just kind of ruined by these houses. I know, there's million dollar homes inside of a ghost town. Yeah, this isn't ghost town. Looks like there's some malachite on this wall here. And right there. You can see it all in the gravel, little green fence. Oh, can you see down inside? Yeah, cool. Whoa, nice. I'm gonna drop some more down there. Oh. It's the original town jail. Check that out. But these are kind of cool little old structures. Whoa. Van life. This is how you do your hair in van life. <laughs> you find a drinking fountain and you do your hair. Where to next? Um, that away. What way? That away. <laughs> Sweet bus. That's nice. Yeah. So we're in Leeds Canyon above the Silver Reef ghost town. And there's free camping up here. It's BLM land. And you're not too far from Zion, so it'll yeah, be a nice about, base camp. About 45 miles from Zion. Yeah. Not bad at all. No. Yeah. Yay, we're in Arizona shortly. Yeah. Well, we might, we'll stay the night here on our way to Vegas. Maybe. Yeah. I guess we are camping in Arizona tonight. Uh, we found this little BLM area. Um, I'll put the name of it here if I remember. It's, a, it's actually a wilderness area. And it's kind of beautiful. There's uh, other, other van lifers here. But take a look at that.
take a look at this lady already looking at the rocks we just pulled up nice thing is is we're pretty self-contained so this is it we just throw a couple of bags in the front and we're done <laughs> oh wow look at the sunset on them hills i'm gonna grab a picture probably can't see anything but this semi just pulled up this road and I'm not sure if they're offloading cattle or what but it is making a ruckus Liz is sleepy It's just weird van life stuff, I guess. To have a semi truck pull up in the dark on a road that who knows if they can turn around on and unload a bunch of cows. At least we're assuming. Liz says it might be velociraptors. Like maybe we're camping in Jurassic Park or something. It's a warm night though, by the way. Good morning. Um, we are in Arizona this morning. And last night, at about 9.30, a semi rolled up and it was dark. We were all, like all the van lifers that are here, it was like at least three of us, were in bed and uh, the semi rolls up and drops off a bunch of cows. So we just go to bed, you know, thinking nothing of it. And then 3 a.m., 3.30 actually, a.m., that same truck comes rolling up and drops off a bunch more cows. They're all congregated over there. So we didn't get the best of sleep last night. Neither did the cows. <laughs> um, but we did see a tarantula this morning, which was cool. And today we're, we're headed more towards Vegas. We might get there today. It's only 100 miles, maybe. Good morning, cows. I'm sorry you had a bad night. You were up pretty late. <laughs> but I hope you enjoy your, your life. Don't get too fat and you'll stay alive. <laughs> Goodbye camp spot. Off to Vegas. Notice there's a sign right there that says no trucks. Where? Right there. Oh, there was all kinds of trucks up there. No buses, no trucks. We just got to Arizona, but we're just about to leave and go to Nevada. There's a speed trap ahead. And there's a speed trap ahead. <laughs> We're not slowing down for this. Nope. We're hitting two states. Well, basically, in the last 24 the hours, we'll have been in three different states. There's Welcome to Nevada. We're here. Welcome to Nevada. Yes. It wasn't official until Google told us. New state, yo. All right. Philip at a 76 station in North Las Vegas was 3.97 a gallon. $63.13. Ouch. Believe it or not, 
as adventurous as I am, I've never been to Vegas. Uh, there's never really been anything in Vegas that called to me uh, because I'm too much of a cheapskate to gamble. Um, slot machines are fun though. I've done it before a couple times. Um, but yeah, this is my first time coming to Vegas. And Charlie came here once when we were... I came when I was 18, so I couldn't gamble. And uh, it was just for my sister's wedding. Yeah, so... So I spent a lot of time at the game works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but here we are in Vegas and the world is our oyster and I don't even know what we're going to do here. I don't even know what to do with myself. Do you know what to do with yourself? I mean, we'll probably just drive through and leave. Yeah, I kind of want to see the lights at night though. Yeah. So we might have to come back at night tonight, find somewhere to camp outside the city. But, uh, oh, there's a van. You can see some skyscrapers over there. We'll see. And uh, no trip to Vegas would be complete without some rock hounding. Absolutely not. <laughs> we are in the Las Vegas Wash, uh, which I found on a rock hounding website and says that there is amethyst in this area. And I already found a little tiny piece of selenite. Nice. So, yeah. Um, a lot of no trespassing signs to get in here, but we found a way with no no trespassing signs. So we could drive right here. Otherwise, you kind of got to park across the way on um, at a park and cross the bridge and come over here. But let's see what we can find. The Hilton Resort over there. Uh, so we stopped. We stopped at a park just across the way, and there was a bunch of big rocks there that have malachite all over them kind of crazy <laughs> here we are finding little pieces of malachite and then there's this these giant rocks just at a park full of malachite and now we're finding this glassy looking stuff that could be selenite could just be clear some nice clear quartz that have lost its color but uh, no amethyst yet like this. Like, what is that? It's so clear. You know, it kind of looks like glass, but glass does not look like that on the side. And we found, this is the biggest piece I've found so far but we found a, a few of these kind of chunks. There's another one right here. Very see-through and shiny. 
stuff is all over. There's a piece right here. Right here. And that's a piece of it, but it's covered in, in white stuff. More of it here. This one's kind of got a little bit of yellow to it. Might be from the dirt on the back though. We haven't run across any snakes yet. Just the tarantula this morning. But that was uh, that was in a whole nother state. <laughs> uh, so we left Utah and we kind of cut across a little corner of uh, Arizona and stayed in that corner of Arizona last night. And then this morning we headed off to Vegas. Drove through the city a little bit and uh, probably go back tonight. So, be interesting. So it says on the map, Las Vegas wash, area gravels, uh, rocks and minerals are amethyst. But, so this is the wash here and it goes across there. But the actual mark on the map is right over there. So I'm gonna check that area out real quick. A lot of these maps and things we found online are not very accurate. Um, but still, as long as they can get you in the general area and you look around, you, you usually find stuff, usually. Except for that time we were in Eureka. <laughs> we didn't find much, Eureka, Utah. Gosh, I've been traveling too much. <laughs> no amethyst yet, but quite the variety of different kind of materials. Sparkly stuff there. An actual Las Vegas is that way. We're about 30 minutes from Vegas here. I believe it's called Henderson. Well, doesn't this look like snake territory? Let's go see if Liz has found anything yet. Have you found anything cool yet? So you probably can't tell, but I think there's some amethyst going on here, right there. There it is. So, okay. And then. Oh yeah, that one looks a little bit purple. Yeah, it's very faint purple. Yeah, I showed him that. Did you see that? Oh yeah, you got some amethyst going on in is there. Is that amethyst or is that uh, rhodonite type stuff? I don't know. Oh yeah. And then I found uh, this pretty Ooh. red quartz looking thing. Yeah. And uh, uh, that's nothing. Okay. Uh, there's something in that. Looks like I found a little bit of red uh, chert. Hmm. Looks almost like a heart. This may be an artifact. I'm almost positive. Yeah, we're almost positive that this is an artifact. Which is insane, because we've been keeping our, our eyes open just to see if we can find them. Yeah. It's, yeah, that's crazy. Here in Vegas. Here in Vegas. I don't know what it is or what it would be, but. And it's definitely like a scraper or something because this is not an arrowhead tip.
But yeah, pretty cool. Showers here whenever you want. What? And what? A toilet? And a mirror so I can see myself. And an even bigger mirror. What? Yes. Yes. Oh, what's this? This isn't opal. What? This isn't opal. This isn't opal? Do we have a view? my gosh I wonder where we're staying what's that say right there uh, Las Vegas Convention Center we're staying in Las Vegas baby <laughs> I still have a shoe on <laughs> I still have two of them on guys this bed is concaved I know we were putting it off before we paid for lodging, uh -huh. but we got to Vegas. It was super hot outside. We kind of want to see the city lights at night. Don't want to have to struggle with finding a spot to camp after dark. And the amount we paid for this room is pretty much the amount we would have paid for showers. Yeah. So, yeah, we got a pretty sweet deal. It was how much? Uh -huh. Before the resort fee and all that, it was 25 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, not bad. We paid $26 for showers before. Exactly. And it was a bonus that they gave us a king size bed and the view and last hotel room on the second to highest floor. This is the first time we paid for any lodging. Every other night we slept in the van. Yep, and free, completely free. Yep. This is pretty exciting. My first time to Vegas, and we're gonna experience experience Vegas the Adventure Closet way. Uh, which you already saw, we went rock counting. <laughs> yeah, it's like the introverted way of experiencing Vegas. So tonight we're gonna do lots of people watching. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah. We don't drink, so we didn't drink it in Vegas. We don't gamble, so we didn't gamble in Vegas. I I was going to. I was like, I'm gonna spend 20 bucks and put it in the slot machine. But now we are back where we like it, away from civilization. Man. Are we boring? <laughs> no. It was interesting doing the people watching, um, and the hotel was nice to have that kind of break. But uh, I'm 
ready to get out in the wild. Yeah, and right. We did see a sign about wild horses up here. And wild horses and burrows. That would be cool. Yep. And now we are headed this way. California today. Probably. It's a lot of states in two days. Yeah, that's what, three states in two days? No, yeah. four states. Utah, Arizona, Nevada, and then California. Yeah. Crazy. Yep. We're just not really city folk. don't like crowds. I mean, people watching was fun. All we did was walk up the strip and walk down the strip and didn't even go in any casinos. Yeah, well, except the one we were staying in. Well, we walked through it. <laughs> we walked through it. <laughs> and there was a little bit of an acrobat acrobatic show going on. Yeah, which we missed. Uh, we caught the very tail end of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, just not a whole lot. For us in Vegas, yeah. Um, you know, we got a couple cool rocks, and that's about it. Now, going somewhere new. Best parts about Vegas. Um, stayed in a hotel room. <laughs> yes. And you found that artifact, which was. Amazing. That was the top highlight for me, was Charlie finding that artifact. Uh, one of our other uh, YouTube friends, uh, 365 Headhunter, says it's probably a Hafton scraper. He was going to get a second opinion on that. And, uh, and then Ragnar Rocks confirmed, too, that it does, in fact, look like an artifact. So um, that's pretty exciting. Uh, lamest part about Vegas. Me? I'm no, the not this part guy. About Vegas? No, add. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, I don't know. Traffic sucked. Uh, it it's cool the first time, but coming back, is, I don't know. Coming back after. Seeing all the sights we've seen already, it's kind of underwhelming. It's yeah. it's just another city. Uh, it's, I don't know. It's another city full of businesses to spend money in. Yeah. Um, if you get your thrills out of that, then it's a blast. But it's, we're cheapskates. We're not into drinking. We're cheapskates, we're frugal. We're frugal. Cheapskates is like, rip people off, isn't it? Well, frugal, and also, I know it's hard to believe because we brought all this stuff with us, but we're very minimalist, and just buying things is just more of a burden than than anything. So, so yeah, Vegas, if you're not going to consume alcohol or consume products, you're not going to have a whole lot of fun. The people watching was interesting, um, but yeah. So, overall, I, I've i experienced Vegas. I probably won't be back. Yeah. Bye now. A song like that? Oh, yeah. Cheryl Crow, Leaving Las Vegas. Yeah. She says, I'm leaving Las Vegas again. What was the last line? And I won't be back. And I won't, and I won't be back again. <laughs> well, that was fun. That was so much fun. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and check us out on Patreon and we'll see you next time. Bye now. Bye now.